you got in, invited, I, I asked myself to give you some um, not insight or some um, ideas how the bad plans in Australia are quite important here in Germany. Now I need to the slides. Yeah, okay. Let me check. So I got a bit uh, afraid when I was asked to fill one hour, but I think I have about half an hour or something like that, and then we can have a chat or what. Or you can ask me any question you want. Okay. Bildschirm Freigabe. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, no? Okay. I hope my okay, you're all nodding and ah okay, thumbs up. Yeah, this is how we have to communicate in Zoom. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um well I'm very proud of this title, I have to admit. In Australia a week back home and need. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't resist to break about it. Yeah, but okay. My idea is uh, of the structure is um, some just general thoughts about uh, um, plants or some some short introduction. I, I I thought I don't need to introduce what a plant is. I mean, we are all botanists and we all know quite well about these stuffs. And then uh, I just I uh, wanted to present some herbs or shrubs, which um, are very important here, but I'm very able and. and Australia and I have not forgotten my thoughts. Um, no, and of course, I thought I have to show you almost all species, but I thought, no, no, less is more, otherwise, your, your brain will explode and mine as well. And then I thought, and um, this is, um, uh, um, I would say, recycling of the talk from last week. I want to show you one slide with um, climate change and polluers. So we have got some new insects in Germany thanks to climate change, although we have some new pollinators or heavy wars, and then also recycling something with mimicry and camouflage, and they will also say something about the host plants, and then in the end, I have uh, something like a surprising box, and in the very end, if you want, if there is a big need, I want to give you some insights of my cane um, motivation or life, my uh, motivation in life, because we were discussing it last week a lot with um, uh, with John Morgan and the other lady, so we need something to thrive on, otherwise we get all yeah, we get all devastated or something like that. So if you want, I can give you some um, slides about it. That is only yeah, five to ten minutes extra, but we'll see. I hope you want. So now we get started. I see you, you see all the first plant you saw on the right side. It's a purslane. It's a worldwide weed, very common here also, and I think it's native to the Mediterranean and. Thanks to the dry and hot summers we have in the last years, they spread very well and grow everywhere. Of course, you can eat them, but you should not eat them if they uh, grow on the middle of the road. Then this is a typical landscape in Germany. Nice a riverine area. We have Oder or Elbe, but in this case, it's not um, Germany at all. It is from the um, geomorphic, what was it? Um, Climate change and geomorphology, of course, at the trophy had this one very nice field trip with John Morgan and John Webb and the other lecturers. And when we were in this area in Hobbles Creek, I thought, oh, it's back home. It's identical, the very same landscape like I have back home in, in Eastern Germany or down elsewhere with the river. And also the plants were very same, um, not the same, but a lot of plants remind me of fake home, so I thought this is a nice and introductionary slide. Yeah. Then why the weeds are important? Ah, yeah. um, many, okay, so, oh, scheiße, sorry. Yeah, okay, that's a bit too big. Okay, uh, many insects will only develop or feed on a single family or genus or even species, depends on the insect. So even if I have this caterpillar will only feed on Artemisia, that will very well camouflage or a lot of bees will collect pollen for their larvae only from one genus or even one species. And then of course a lot of plants will keep the landscape intact so the erosion can be avoided, especially the perennial herbs everywhere or even the willows and rivers. And as far as I know, the these were the reasons for the willows why they got introduced in Australia. So when the when the settler chopped everything down, they realized, oh, was not a good idea. So let's import some trees from Europe. I hope it, and please correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think it was something like that. And then of course there are many um, 
uh, weeds or many and herbs you can eat or you can use as vegetables or as spices. I don't do it that often, but sometimes I use them. Artemisia you can use to for spice for meat or something like that. that or a lot of them you can use for tea. And then a very important thing, I mean, this is with um, conservation practice. A lot of things are mowed or destroyed every year. Yeah, the mowing is the issue. Otherwise, you need to mow. Otherwise, we will have um, shrubs or trees. But yeah, how you say mosaic mowing or something like that is the best because if stems or stalks are not mowed, we'll have the seeds for the finches or other birds which, which depend on them during the winter. So they'll go on these areas or not mowed areas in winter and will harvest the seeds from the branches or wherever. And a lot of insect species, even as eggs, larvae or pupa or even adults, they will overwinter or hibernate and or inside that store. And when I mow them in, in early spring or in, in autumn, I kill everything. And then when I made the talk yesterday, I realized a lot of plants here are archaeopeats. So originally from the Mediterranean or from uh, Southeastern Europe or, East, um, or Western Asia, something like that. And we are brought here with agricultural revolution or something like that long, long time ago. And then I re realized, oh, we don't have archaeopeats in Australia because the definition is has to be arrived before the Discovery of America, 1492. After that, it's a new field. So, yeah, Australia was settled around 17 something. So, quite a funny thing. Mm. Then, just a, just a quick shot. I did yesterday how such a wasteland or not a typical lawn, if it's not too um, over fertilized, looks like that in summer. We have some roses. With the fruit, you have some stinging nettles, and in the foreground is a sister, the common sister, which is also weed in Australia. And in the background, the yellow thing, I was told I have to focus on it. It's a, um, it's a golden root, it's not from here, it's from America, so it's in, in Wales here itself, but the, the flowers very late, and so all insects are enjoying the late feast. And this here is, um, I forgot the name, Schafgabe in German, I forgot the English name. Yeah, yellow, yellow it was, yeah. Oops, sorry. Then this is just in winter, how such a rural, uh, rural world place looks like. Here you can see the old carrots, and that's why I said when you don't mow them, we have the seeds everywhere, or also this is um, Astrid, how you say, yeah, these. Ast no, sorry, where yeah, was the other? Sorry, I have to. Ah, Centaurea was a genus. Okay, now I got it. Centaurea. They are consistent. If you don't mow them, all the birds will enjoy them in winter. Now I struggle to get back. Okay, here I am. Okay, this I just wanted to show you the winter aspect of it's not mowed, how it looks like. Then just the first pollination aspect of um, Cesium arvense. Uh, also a very common system here. I'm not sure if it got introduced in Australia, I don't think so, but I just want to show how important these plants are for the insects. Yeah. And well, well, they don't develop on, on systems, but they will visit it. And this one is a bee wolf. It's my favorite wasps in the, in the bottom right corner. They'll hunt honeybees, but yeah, for themselves, they also visit flowers. Then it's the first um, animal plant interaction thing I wanted to start with. The, St. John's Ward, it was not named after me, unfortunately, but there's a, um, one very, very nice moss who is monophag on this species, so the caterpillars will only feed on St. John's Ward or other hypericum species, but nothing else. And I just uh, enjoy this moss a lot. I've seen it only once and I felt in love immediately. A very, very nice coloration and pattern. Okay. I, Continue. Then as it was very interesting, the um, the purple vipers buglos and uh, Ischium plantaginiseum is a very bad weed in Australia. We don't have it in Germany or only sometimes in, in southern parts, I think, but we have an Ischium vulgar, it's very common. And they just wanted to point out of that bee, that vipers buglo nasal bee. I am um, used to uh, 
and blurry photo is purpose because it shows that everything in life is always perfect, but you can see the B and this E will only collect pollen from that issue, from nothing else, will only collect there the pollen and the long run beetle, sorry, I'm very upset that the name got removed, here it is, sorry, okay, you shouldn't fix your slides during the talk, but okay, well, this long run beetle will also only feed on Asium or related um, taxa, like um, dox songo or something like that. And the, they, the larvae, they um, bore into the stem and they can cause the death of the Asium. And that's why this longhorn beetle was introduced to Australia to help with the Asium plantar uh, with the other Asium. I don't know how successful it was, but it's very, very pretty. And um, species you don't see it on the board, it's very blue and turkey. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I just learned the species this year before I didn't know that, that one. Then it's a very, um, now we are with um, Willow. This is our, our Sadiq tree in our garden who is dying right now thanks to the drought, where it's losing a lot of leaves now in August. Usually, should we drop the leaves in October, November? And this is one of my favorite um, moss, the red underwing, and it will develop on any random willow or poplar and also occurs even in the middle of cities, as long as you have the host trees there and they don't get attracted to light. You can best attract them with alcohol like red wine and sugar, and then you can shoot some nice pictures. The uh, musk beetle in the middle will also develop on willows, so they, the larvae they will bore in the wood. Like, like a lot of um, longhorn beetles do. And this one I had to add because in my kindergarten when I was a small boy, these ones I um, came, came across very often. So it was one of my childhood memories that I always had these musk beetles in the kindergarten. And the name they comes from the typical smell, so they really smell like musk. And even they are in a pitfall trap or they are dead long time, they still smell like that. And very important for willows, I have to add that um, they flower very, very early in early, early March, mid March. And so they are the first flowers for the hibernating insects who will offer some nectar or some pollen. And they are long, and there are a lot of bees and who will only collect in sardix pollen for the larvae. And the flight time is very synchronized with the um, flowering time of the sardix. So if the sardix is over, the bees are, will also disappear. Then I have to include it because it's a very famous mammal, and I think you also had it in the study. I remember in, in Nick Murphy, we had the beaver one time, and they also like a lot of willow and pop, poplar and will chop them down, and that's why the willow can easily regenerate, so they can e easily grow from, from cuttings. And the three on the, on the left is a beach, but I just wanted to show it because you can see the tracks very nice, and how, how the work was done. Actually, I saw how the tree uh, dropped, so I never saw it before. It was quite impress impressive. And why I also included the beaver was I, I learned this year that they will also go to Tuya. It's a um, conifer, which um, is planted a lot as hedges or something like that. And it's actually toxic for us, but the beaver likes it. And sometimes they go to the garden and chop down some Tuyas. I'm very happy about it because I dislike Tuya. Yeah, because it's a dead plant, there are no insects on it. Uh, yeah, and just I wanted to note with the beaver, it's a very huge mammal, it's one meter long, and you can see the tracks everywhere, but the beaver himself, what it says, is very hard to see. And so that for also a lot of insects have a cryptic lifestyle. Sometimes it's best recorded for the tracks or, or with the eggs, so some insects you rarely see, but they are around. Then very, um, Oh, I just forgot to um, tell what I learned with the willow in um, Australia. That's the issue because the uh, um, leaves, well, you, you don't have um, leaf dropping trees in Australia besides the Notophagus, but the uh, willow will, will throw all the leaves into the river and then you got a pollution problem with your rivers. I was very shocked when I heard it the first time because for us in Germany, yeah, willows are common and normal, they belong to us, but where they don't belong to, they, they may cause problems. This is another um, hated shrub in Australia, I've learned. 
on oh, everybody just like Spratego because they grow and thickens and whatnot. And, but these dense thickets are quite useful here because a lot of birds like to breed in them or also dense and brundle thickets. And of course, the berries are very important for birds. Even I never see a bird eating hawthorn berries. Maybe the winter has to be very bad that they get accepted. And the other very important vector are the flowers from, from the Cartago. So when it's flowering, they are high in course. You see nice longhorn beetles visiting them. Yeah. All the all the all um Hulu species are very important when flowering. Then this was very impressive. Uh, in front of my auntie's place, uh, they planted a lot of Cotoneaster. Cotoneaster is not um, it's not native, but it's accepted very well from the house almost, and you can see the big damage they, they do there. I didn't count them, maybe way over a thousand or something like that. I got very impressed. And so now that what is uh, leading to the climate change, I think the house on what's get, what's um, much more common because they like the heat or the warmth. So I didn't saw it earlier, maybe I had looked for it, but otherwise I think it's very and uh, draws your attraction so I, I, you can't oversee something like that. And I also would like to know why they make this sharp, um, sharp border. But yeah, we will see. So now the climate change. Well, um, yeah, just just to show the beauty of insects, don't, don't want to explain that much. There's a, the scare swallow tile, it's a very nice one. It feeds on prunus. We have a much more common. And they're not much more common, but another swallow tail species, which is a little bit more common, they feed on carrots or other related ones. And yeah, just I wanted to show that the golden digger wasp who was um, extinct in Germany uh, until some years ago. It's now spreading a lot because the climate changes, gets much more warmer, much more drier. So the mediterranean species are very happy with it. And the golden digger wasp was very frequent on uh, oregano or dust. It's the same plant you use as a kitchen for a pizza, but also grow wild here. And there was one area where we was on holiday, there were 20 or 30 golden digger wasps running around on the oregano and enjoying it. And so I thought, hmm, if we have new insects, we have maybe some new pollination systems or something like that. Yeah, even the white spotted rose beetle, a small rose chaper, will visit various types of flower and very frequently. We never saw it before in our holiday area in Saxony, but until but then 2019, it appears everywhere out of nowhere. Yeah, just so so what. And then now I come to mimicry and camouflage. Sorry, I have to drink something. If you have a question in between, you can ask maybe. Yeah, so one is clearing. This is one of the examples who have a very cryptic lifestyle. So you rarely see the adults. I only see two adults in my life by now. But you can easily record them um, with the um, excavation holes or when they hatch, they make very characteristic holes in the on the base of poplar trees. So the host plant is poplar. The poplar is very common, so that's why the uh, hornet clearing is very common, but you never see them. You only see the excavation holes. And the thick wall sawfly, I also included because it's very excellent camouflage for polistas. They even fly like polistas with hanging legs, and they will also feed on mullein, so that's why I could include it because I know mullein, where bascom is also naturalized in Australia. And the nice camouflage. Yeah, here's the yarrow, and here in left to the Writing, unfortunately, you don't see the mouse when I move it, so I have to, you have to search the beetle, but I think you can see it. It's very well camouflaged and they will develop on Astracea or in this case on Yarrow. And then with the, <coughs> with the um, eight hawk moss, I just wanted to say an interesting anecdote. They will feed on many different trees. The preferred host plant is a willow. But this caterpillar I found on black cherry, Bruno Serotina, and this is itself a very, very worse weed here in, in Europe from America. And, and some insects will feed on them, not a lot of them, but it's quite interesting to see how our native insects will also accept the weeds from other parts of the world. 
you know, I think it's the same in Australia, but I, I never asked you, maybe you have some ideas or some examples of this later one would be interested. So now we go to the um, box. A uh, surprise, there's a very interesting MOS, the box three MOS. Um, we only feed on box three books to send their viewers. And the box, the box three is very often planted here for ornamental purpose or as a hedge or a small shrub. And in 26, the first record of the box three MOS was done in Europe. Finally, in, in southern Germany. And it's very, very beautiful. Most for me, but they can kill the plant very hard. You see the caterpillars, they're everywhere and they can really kill it. I am not sad about it because it's not native. There's a box free in Northern Germany. Yeah, I forgot to say something. Ah, ah this is a very important thing with the box free. Um, the name box for a small, yeah, like a box to carry something in that was derivated from the box free itself. So not the box free was named after the box but the box was named after the box tree because the wood is very hardy and very steady so that's why the first boxes were made out of that plant and so that's why well that's why it's called box and not beach or something like that very interesting for me just wanted to share you that random knowledge with you so then it was my um how do you say or hana or uh, how do you say uh, yeah so hana the um the natural lecturer i made a funny quiz to which the surprising box is dedicated to which Latrobe lecturer are ah, Susan Huby, ja, danke Susan, dass du hier bist, da kannst du dich freuen, E. Martin Steinbauer oder C. Rita Peters. The true answer is, all answers are correct, so I wanted to go through. I don't know when and how I got this idea, but I got very excited and so that's what I wanted to share with you. Here you see a box three without caterpillars and the, yeah, yeah, the caterpillars out. And Susan Huby from you, I learned the thing with local provenance. We didn't have it in, in my study before, but when I came back, we had it. And it's very interesting. We have only one native population of the box tree in Germany because the box tree reached here a distribution limit. It's only that's more distributed to, Susan, to Southern Europe. And so we have one, one uh, small forest in Southwestern Germany. And it's a book by by Grenzer. And yeah, well, now, no, sorry, with the local provenance, so, but the uh, tree is planted everywhere else for ornamental purpose, and here it's not native. It's not native in, in Berlin, it's not native in other areas of, of Germany, but the uh, mass does not discriminate. So, box, uh, box tree is box tree for it, so that's why it's also arrived in the, in the only native population, the books by Krenzer, and that one is very crippling now. And I, I checked the the internet yesterday and they say the forest won't recover, it's dying slowly. If you Google it, books by the white and stuff, you can see some really horrible photos from some naked tree and well, not nice, but this was I saw with local provenance. Uh, the um, moss does not discriminate whether if the host, host is native here or not native, no, it will kill it anyway. Then with Richard Peters, I saw it, yes, animal behavior. We have a new juicy fat caterpillar, so the birds learn to harvest the caterpillars from the dense webs. The larvae will spin very dense webs around the box trees, and but the birds um, obviously have learned how to adapt, and all the wasps systematically approach the box tree and search there for the caterpillars. I've seen this with the wasps to the birds. I haven't seen it by now, but very unfortunately now we are with conservation again. The box tree moth, a lot of people are getting money with it because they sell insecticides and they oh, you have to spray with uh, uh, several um, hard poisons to get to get rid of them. But yeah, when you kill the caterpillars, the birds will collect the dead caterpillars and will feed it to the young. And then everybody is surprised why they have dead birds in their garden. Yeah, sorry, I'm a bit angry. I, I don't understand why some people can't think properly, but yeah. That's why we are here with ecology students. We have to change the world. So this is why I thought we can have a Richard Peters here because new food will acquire some new behavioral adaptations. And of course, for Martin, I thought a plant without the, the psyllid is not a plant. Of course, the box tree has its own psyllid here. 
So the books, you will only repeat on box three. And the larvae, they don't form lerps. They, they, um, form, they, sorry, they, not, they form like kind of crippling of the leaves. The leaves look like spoons. Yeah, but they have only one generation. The box tree does not look, look nice afterwards, but it's all right, it don't harm. Even there, you, they say, oh, you have to kill the box tree, kill it, but no, quite nice species. All right, then this was my last slide for the um, for tennis stuff, just a, a search photo. I know Chenipodium album is also a weed in Australia, but here we have a nice beetle who takes care of it. It's a tortoise beetle. And yeah, unfortunately, I can't show with the mouse where it is, but you should see five tortoise beetles on the plant. Or seven if you count the two bigger ones with them. Okay, this was my botany part. And I don't know if you want to hear about the uh, K motivation in life. Or if you have to you have a discussion in between, I don't know how you would like to handle it. Uh, any questions by now? I don't have any questions, John, but I would like to say well done on pulling the presentation together and, and thinking cross continentally um, and also in terms of animal plant interactions. Mm. Okay, otherwise, I, if there's so no other urgent question, I would consider uh, continue with the, yeah, with the motivation in life. I think you know what will come. Any guesses what will come? Okay. I have to bring, oh, I don't know why it's blue now. Um, well, you can, I, I, I have to admit, I had a, I had some kind of bad mood or something like that during the, from September to June, but luckily it's, um, it's um, over, over, came, um, over done and now I'm back to normal. Um, I was not in a good mood for some time and don't know why, but doesn't matter. Well, what I wanted to say, if you have a bad time in your life, you need something to cling on. You need something where you think, okay, it's um, useful to fight for it. Well, that's why it's written here in German. You can achieve everything in, in life. You just shouldn't give up your hope and you should and um, believe in the things you want to achieve. So, and this is a short, um, very, um, you know, a short thing about life motivation. Okay, last questions before I solve it. Does anyone have an idea about what I will talk now? At least Alice should now. Alice, I need your voice. What do you think I'm going to talk now? Only Very well done, Alice. Yes, I know you know me. So that's why. Well, I, I, I copied the slides from something else, so from a German talk, and I thought I leave in German because a lot of you know German very well and you can practice. And so I could talk 12 hours about Australia or the Tony Frogmores, but these 10 minutes are quite important to me. And luckily, I don't need to introduce you to the Tony Frogmores, you know everything about it. So I can skip the introduction. And yes, as you see, to find it at night, it's quite easy because they sit on branches, they stare at you, they um, don't have a big um, uh, flight distance. But during the day, you are, yeah, you are hopeless, you have no chance. It's a very nice photo from Lee Campbell, also a fellow student. Well, you all know they look like branches during the day and it's very hard to find them. Once you know where they stay, you can visit them every day because they use the same rules and well and it was I was very desperate because they all said oh it's very easy to to see Tony Frogmos during the day very easy just check every branches and the branch who does not look like a branch is a Tony with me it was vice versa everything looks like Tony Frogmos but only their branches so yeah here you can see a family with uh, three cheeks in the channel and the adult in the sun a 12 year old Boy spotted them in the when we were on the walk at um, uh, Gresswell Habitat Link. I was very surprised. So my my task was okay during the night you can find them easily, but at at day I want to find 
to find them on my own. All the other ones I have seen, they got um, they were shown by me from sorry, they were shown me from uh, others. But my motivation was to find the own one. So after four months, so I came here in, in February and in in May during that and kangaroo count in Crystal Forest, I saw my first one during the day. Uh, well, it's just, okay, I'm happy, but I thought oh, I have to, I want to find our own uh, territory. I have to find a, a pair within my within my area. It must be must be positive, but yeah, I was very frustrated. So now now the dialogue. Well, these are my friends from Car Park 7. As far as I know, they are still there, only uh, mainly in winter and summer they are somewhere else. But yeah, next to the sports building, they have the territory. And uh, well, I, as I said, I found the single one during the kangaroo count and Rice McDizzy, who was uh, leading our group, got very uh, surprised when I was yelling and said, oh, my first Tony Brock was during the day. He thought, oh, well spotted. But as I said, I wanted to find a, a pair and I was running around, I was desperate. I was walking, checking every tree and going to random parks near uni and was desperate. And three days, yeah, three days before I had to leave Melbourne, uh, I said, I have to give it a, a last chance. Sorry, I have to give it a last chance. I was running around I, and I was desperate and I decided to take a nap under this random tree. And when I wake up under after this name, I was staring just into the face of one tawny frog one, and I thought, wow, why did I choose that tree and not any random other tree for a nap? So this is what I mean, you, uh, I, I can't explain. Since for rational reasons, there must be something else behind. I think every one of us has such magic moments. And yeah, when I spotted the pair and I, I take photos a lot, and in the end, it was very angry and said, yeah, you see the, the A's like go away or leave me alone. And so in the last two days, I was visiting them every day in that place. And I got, was very happy that even I was desperate and hopeless in between, I kept on searching and finally I achieved what I wanted. So this is just what I wanted to say. If you have a hard time in life, uh, don't quit everything. Even me, I thought I should quit everything, but no, no. Just search something which gives you hope and then continue and one day the hope will be fulfilled. Unfortunately, nobody will tell you. Now it's a moment where the hope will, or where, where the dream comes true. Yeah, we have to work hard. All right, this was it. Any questions or thoughts? I think Tawny Frogmouths are just inspirational gentlemen for everybody. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't yeah, yeah. Matter new to Australia or not, they're lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to make a plan to come back to that frog one day. I haven't figured out yet when or how, but I have to come back. Sure, you'd be welcome. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, John. That was amazing. It's, oh, <laughs> I love you. that we ended on a tawny frog mouth note, but um, back with the discussion about some of the, the species that we see as problems here, but you see as crucial to your systems in Germany. I think it's so important to step back and sort of think about the weeds that we have here as plants, mm. the way that we see our natives sometimes we can just uh, brush over weeds and I think they're, they can be at least interesting. Um, and maybe we shouldn't always just ignore them or think that they're terrible things because mm -hmm. they serve a purpose somewhere, maybe not here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, and sometimes invasive species can be even beneficial. So we have a mussel, an introduced mussel species, Trisena, it is very charm and you can um, cut yourself easily, but a lot of um, water birds have discovered it as a nice food source and some birds which we are rare are now quite common due to that introduced mussel species. So not everything is bad, but yeah. I mean to introduce the fox to Australia because you felt homesick, this was for sure a very bad idea. Yeah. All right. Now I'm always in the chat. Mm. Yeah, 
Well, I have nothing to add by now. You know, be free to ask anything or to add any code, but yeah. What was the um the plant that the opsilia longhorn hmm? beetle? What which plant was the opsilia longhorn uh, beetle on? Um, Asium, Asium vulgare, and Vipers buglos, or Doxstongs. Vipers buglos, Asium, or Echium, you would say in English. Echium, oh, yeah. Echium, okay. Yeah, Echium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was a really pretty longhorn beetle. I'm going to try and find it. Yeah, I don't know if it's a course around Melbourne, but I, I read it was introduced to Australia. Yeah. And they also, as you see the adults, they will also sit on the, on the house plants and gnaw on them. Maybe you, you use a sweep netting or something like that. And then like dry, uh, dry, warmer places and I know. Let's see, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we have an introduced plant from Australia here in Germany. No, we, we have a South African plant who makes some problems because it's quite toxic. It's a Zinegio species, but from Australia, we don't have stuff. I think it's too cold. Yeah. Okay. It's storming outside and raining. We haven't rained for maybe two months or something like that. And now finally rain comes back. But uh, we'll see how climate change develops. Very exciting. Just to fill you in, John, on the shelf garbage, I think it's yarrow in English. Yeah, yarrow. Yeah, genau, yarrow. Thank you. And thanks for having me. Well done. Mm. Irena is also from Germany. Is yes, I am. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Learning a lot about Australian plants. <laughs> but not from me, it's from, she came from, from Ellis. Ah, okay. Yeah, thanks for, for having me. That was good. <laughs> no, if I like that one. Hi, Alice. <laughs> Oh, very good. I wonder if Gilbrook can say something. something that one friend has also joined Gilbrook. I don't know if he can say something. Uh, mm -hmm. What will be the topic for next week? That's a good question. Uh, I was thinking of inviting the Nature Advisory along, who are supporters of the Botany Society. Um, but that'll depend on whether they can do it at a week's notice. So that could be either next week or the week after. So I know, Nina, you've just got a fancy new microscope for the club. So maybe we could show it off in the next one, do some flower dissections. Yep, I've just got to find some uh, flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I um, you find something. Yeah, I went to Greswell on the weekend and there was a lot of stuff almost out um but yeah so but i'm there's plenty of weeds <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah flowering you uh, have to yeah. steal gorilla steal some from someone's garden out the front just <laughs> yeah. you should find the peas and rodanthe and are all coming out now yeah, I didn't. See, I mean, there was a lot of waddles out at um, there as well. Um, but yeah, I need to check out a few other reserves around. Yeah, yeah, it's right, right near the trobe. Sure, and the melisitis is all going off at the moment. So. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna have to love and leave everyone. I, I think I got the oldest one doing part of dinner, but I better go and finish it off. <laughs> Thank you for coming, mm. Susan, again. Uh, no problem. Uh, I would say danke wir mal uh, to, to yeah. John, but it's Swiss, so vielen <laughs> Dank. Thank you. Merci, vielen Dank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Thanks, see, you, see you, everybody, and hope to catch up again soon. Yeah. Good night, Matisse. Yeah. <laughs> okay, danke schön auch von mir. Tschüss. Mm. Tschüss, tschüss. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, well, we might as well wrap it up if yeah. anyone hasn't got yeah. any last minute. Again, thank you so much, John. That was awesome. That was <laughs> thank you. I um, wasn't disappointed and I was really looking forward to this. So you lived up to my expectation. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I made it. <coughs> okay. Well, have a lovely evening and uh, Wait, yeah, have a nice morning, is it? Yeah, 11, yeah. it's almost 11, 11 a.m. Yeah. Oh, almost lunchtime, great. Right? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, eight hours behind. Then Ron is he come back, um, he couldn't make it at the midnight note tonight. He told <laughs> football So yeah. I think you figure out how to upload it, you will. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Or if I can just send it to you, possibly. If I can't end up uploading it, I'll send it to you. Then talk it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll send it to Ben then. Yeah, awesome. Great. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Have a good okay. night, guys. Yeah. Thanks.